he's Nick, and you are listening to part two of the Nick and Joe show for this week. I've already said that I'm Joe and he's Nick, so I guess I don't really have to Say it again. repeat that. But it just sounds so exciting, right? Yeah. I'm Joe, he's Nick, and you're listening to the Nick and Joe show, coming to you live from the Think Radio Broadcast Center in Canada's national capital. From Nick it and Joe. It sort of trickles off the tongue. You know, he's <laughs> saying it's such passion. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does something off the tongue, that's for sure. It, Springboards, it, maybe? It it does. Uh, okay, where are we going? So, uh, if you're listening to the podcast after the fact, okay, um, uh, and you haven't heard the first part, you have to go back because we had a lot of fun talking about, you know, COVID-19 restrictions. And, uh, you know, we've always say, we always say we're not going to talk about COVID tonight. And then we we end, we up, end up talking about COVID. About COVID. It's, it's but it's hard. it's a, it's an interesting one, and there are some it raises. We've raised, I think, some very important points, uh, and, uh, and so you know, I really encourage people to go back and listen to it. Of course, you're listening to the live show, and you're sticking with us. That that's uh, we're always happy with that too. That's a bonus too. If you want to participate uh, in the conversation live, please click on the bubble, the chat bubble, and the live player. You may have to register. You may have to log in if you're already registered. That's to ensure that you're a real flesh and blood human being, not a liberal algorithm. A malignant algorithm. I said liberal. A liberal algorithm. I was going to say a a liberal bot. The same thing. Something like that. Same but different. What's the difference between a bot and a spider? I've seen like the terminology. I think a spider is what crawls around and a bot is what happens when you hit it with your heel of your shoe. Okay. Well, I was talking computers. But... Oh, oh. Well, anyway, when I said hello to you, I told you all I, I know about computers. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can't, you just, we cannot go more than a few years at a time without some crisis hitting the royal family. Yep. And it's a real shame, Nick, because I'm a monarchist. I believe in the tradition of the monarchy. Yep. I believe that there's a place for the monarchy in our constitution. It's it's not just that I don't want to change the constitution. I think that they provide a valuable service uh, that the queen does. And so I'm happy with that. But my goodness gracious. So uh, Prince Harry and the His Duchess wife. of Sussex otherwise known as Megan Megan Merkel Merkel was it Merkel Merkel I'm just not sure about this pronunciation properly who who by the way was the star one of the stars of the a series called Suits series called Suits which was a very good series it was it was interesting all filmed in Toronto it was very funny because it was supposed to take place in, in New, New York, York City but um, but the uh, whenever they had the street scenes they're all in Toronto. Well, you could see. Well, you could tell because there were either Tim Hortons or Rogers. And the streets uh, were clean. Rogers stores or whatever. But the 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 lobby shots in the building where their offices ostensibly were supposed to be. Right. That lobby, that building, happens to be where our lawyers are were for when I was involved in the. This uh, court case involving the Conservative Party of Canada and really? Brad Trost, our lawyers, were in, that, were in building. that building, right? So it was sort of like whenever I'd go down and see them, it would be like, yeah, it's the Suits building. You know, I'm going up to see Harvey or whatever. No. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I liked Harvey. I always did. I thought he was a great character. But but all, all joking aside, all joking aside, um, so these guys gave a, uh, a, a interview, a tell, tell all revealing interview and everybody now everybody's exploding about it okay you know everybody's like well we have to get rid of the monarchy and they're terrible people and my goodness gracious they 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 didn't take they didn't take megan merkel seriously when she was talking about having suicidal thoughts and uh, that kind of stuff and you know i go well i don't know why you would announce all of this to the world if it was true then they then she says something to the effect of i wasn't going to say anything shocking but you know, somebody told my husband they were talking about the color of the baby's skin. And uh, now I'm going to shock all of our listeners. So everybody just easy does it. Everybody who knows me knows I'm not a racist, okay? But <laughs> am I the only person 
Okay, this is going to get us in big trouble. <laughs> Am I the only person that, you know, a sense of humor, half jokingly, if I was talking to my brother or whatever and his w- wife, who happens to be a mixed race, and they're having a baby, Am I the only person that maybe impolitely, impolitically might go, gee, just jokingly, gee, I wonder I wonder what color the baby's skin is going to be. And, you know, I could see that question actually being raised in all innocence. I, I, I you know, it's, it, maybe it's insensitive and maybe it's stupid. And in fairness, I probably wouldn't ask it either. I'd go, okay, yeah. Not because it's wrong, but because I know I'm going to get in trouble. trouble for it. But I just, I don't, I'm not sure that I agree that it was, if that's what was going on, you know, I, I don't, I could see that kind of question being okay, asked. Okay, well, here's innocent. why I don't have a, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Harry is about as white as it gets. He's got flaming red hair. He's Anglo-Saxon to the bone. Megan has olive skin. And looks like there's Mediterranean influence in her background. Maybe. So, of course, you you never know. It's like life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Not that it changes anything as far as their abilities as parents is concerned. What opportunities the child has. I kind of pity the kid, whatever it is, boy or girl. Because you're entering in one of the highest pressure, highest profile pressure cookers on the planet to be part of the British royal family. I mean... It's just the kid is in for a life unlike anybody else. But a question like that, first of all, like, grow up. Don't ask it. Or if you do, have a thick skin and say, who knows? Who cares? Well, but, you know, part two to my observation on this yes. is that um, Megan asks the question or says this. Knowing that this is going to, that she's got to know this is going to sitting be in front explosion. of a black woman. By the way, this is this is going to be a bombshell. Yeah. Okay. The royal family is racist, even to their own grandchildren. Okay. She's got to know that this is going to be either that, a, or she's a, not a, a, she's all lit, that. She's bright. lit a fuse to a dynamite keg. Yeah. And, well, and then she's, but then she refuses to say. Who, Who said, said it? it? Leaving the whole family totally tainted. That's right. And then after the show, my understanding is, and this is from Oprah herself. Right. Who gave that, the interview? That Harry went to her after the show and said, listen, I just want you to know it wasn't my grandmother, Queen Elizabeth. Of course. And it wasn't my grandfather which would be Prince Philip. And right. everybody, of course, was automatically assuming it had to be Prince Philip, right? Of course. <laughs> so I don't know who did it. I don't know whether it happened or not. I have no reason to disbelieve it. But surely to goodness, if you're going to throw that out there, an accusation like that, you got you got to tell us who it is. Not because you have to satisfy our curiosity, but you, but want, you, you, don't, you don't want to taint half the family or that's right the rest of the family with that kind of that's like whispering in somebody ear, ear we have a child molester in our family well really who is it well i can't tell you yeah yeah privacy concerns yeah no kidding which, so why'd you mention it we do we, we we follow that sometimes right yeah but why would you mention it if you're going to follow it up with that well uh, my point exactly yeah and, and even even more importantly okay let the guy let the and i say guy maybe it's like you know Whoever. Maybe it's, maybe it's Prince Charles. Maybe, maybe it's Camilla. I don't know. It could be Andrew. Okay. Um, uh, let let the person defend themselves. And put it into context. Okay. That's all. Take the stigma off of, remove the stigma from everybody else in the family. And, and if this one person said it, let them say, as I said, yeah, yeah, I was asking, but it was really more just a jest. It was not, a, you know, I think it's a stupid thing to ask because, you know... <sighs> You're going to get in trouble for it, right? But as I said before, when we started this conversation, I could see, I could see how something like that could have been asked innocently. Now, all of that to say that every once in a while, when something like this flares up, there's a huge outcry, uh, or at least there seems to be a huge outcry. I don't know anymore whether or not <laughs> this gobbleistic. Uh, globalistic uh, news media that we have 
and I think you get my reference, um, can actually tell us what's a huge outcry and what's just spin by the media and or the government. Uh, when this happens, people start asking, well, why do we have the queen in the first place? What's the point of having her as the monarch of our country? Why don't we have uh, something like the United States where we don't have, you know, the prime minister is the head of the uh, chief of defense or he's the uh, commander in chief. The president. Yeah, the, I'm sorry, yes. But in Canada, it would switch to, if it, we don't have a governor's general, it would be uh, the prime minister would take on that role. Why don't we no, just no, have that? Does. What's that? Oh, I see. If saying. we get rid if of the monarchy. Have a monarchy. Right, right. You're right. You're, you're quite right. Yeah, sure. But <clears throat> so my attitude is, well, first of all, it's a nod to our heritage. Britain is our founding country. And... Because of Britain and the way they conducted themselves, they're not angels by any stretch. There's lots of black marks on Britain's history. But if you look at the colonies, wherever Britain went, they're all democracies. More for the most part. Uh, the big ones are India, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the United States, just to name the top four. Okay? And you're talking, you know, almost a billion people in that crowd just by itself. Enjoy freedom because of the English crown. On top of that, we have property rights through our land-grant patents, which I spent two or three years beating the drum on and defying people to show me why that isn't true if our native treaties are true, because they both bear the same seal of authority, the Great Seal of England. Anyway, that's a, a, a rabbit hole Nick, we won't go down. No, Nick wants to drag me into that conversation. No, no, I'm, I'm simply ending it there. I'm just saying these are part of the reasons yes. why I think we need to hang on to uh, simply for posterity's sake, because it doesn't cost us anything. Look, you don't. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm putting on my conservative hat. Okay. You, you, history is a continuum. There's a past, there's a present, and there's a future. And uh, you don't, you don't look at the past in the context of today, and say, "Well, we wouldn't if we were designing it today. We wouldn't have a monarchy, so therefore, we should tear down the monarchy and start again." Because that's that's a recipe for constant change. Because that's a recipe. Once you establish that principle, then every generation tears down what came before it. Right. And so this is just not the way that you conduct business that life and the world operates. Okay, so we, why do we have a monarchy? We have a monarchy because we are the recipients of a thousand years of British tradition that has given us democracy, that's given us a sense of, of, of our political rights, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And why would we want to go, well, we can keep all of these things, but we're going to throw away the all of they the gave it accoutrements to us. that came along with these things. Right. And, you know, I just, I'm saying, no, you don't do that. You have, we have an obligation, it's a very important principle in conservative thinking, is we don't think of ourselves as being the beginning and the end of everything right here in the present. We see ourselves as being the link between the past and the future. Mm -hmm. We've inherited a past. We make improvements on it where improvements can reasonably be made and should reasonably be made. So we're not against improving things and change. And we hand that off to the future. And so there's a certain amount of continuance a certain amount of consistency, a certain amount of stability that comes along with that. That we're willing to make changes, but we're not prepared to make changes simply for the sake of making of changes. changes. Yeah, and I, I kind of follow in that track as well um, because it doesn't. Co it's not like we're sending, you know, shiploads worth of cash over to England for the for the privilege of having the Queen as our. Mom.